Today we're going to be talking about how to determine whether or not a series converges absolutely or converges conditionally. And in this particular video we're going to be doing two different examples trying to determine whether or not each of these infinite series converges absolutely or conditionally, if at all. Now it's important to remember that a series is conditionally convergent if it converges but is not absolutely convergent, the series is absolutely convergent if the absolute value of the series is convergent. And so basically what we can what we can remember is that if the absolute value of the series a sub n, and we would call this part of the series here, this value, this formula for the series, this is a sub n and this here is a sub n, another example of a series. If the absolute value of a sub n is convergent, if this is convergent, then we know that the series is absolutely convergent. Otherwise, it may not be absolutely convergent. This particular part might not be true, but this series in general without the absolute value bars may be convergent, and in that case, it would be conditionally convergent. So when we're talking about absolute convergence, the best way to test for it is using either the ratio test or the root test if we can. The ratio and root tests for convergence have absolute convergence built right into the definition of those convergence tests. So if there's any way that we can use those, we want to. The ratio test is often a little bit more flexible than the root test in terms of applying it to series in general, but either one will allow us to determine absolute convergence if the series is set up in a way such that we can use the test. So let's go through one example of each so we can start getting a feel for how we can use those tests to determine absolute convergence. So in this first example, we have the infinite sum from n equals 1 to infinity of this series, which is 10 to the n power divided by the quantity n plus 1 times 4 raised to the power 2n plus 1. Now this is a perfect candidate for the ratio test, and the reason is because the ratio test tells us that the limit, L, is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of basically a sub n plus 1 divided by a sub n. And all that means is that we're going to be plugging in n plus 1 everywhere we have n in our original series here. And we're going to put that in the numerator inside these absolute value bars. And then we're going to take the original function a sub n and put that in the denominator. So in other words, let's go ahead and substitute n plus 1 everywhere where we have n in our original series. So instead of 10 to the n, we'll get 10 to the n plus 1. And then in our denominator here, instead of n plus 1, we'll substitute n plus 1 here for this n and get n plus 1 plus 1, or in other words, n plus 2. And then here we'll get 4 to the 2 times n plus 1. 2 times n plus 1 is 2n plus 2. So we'll get 2n plus 2 plus 1, or in other words, 2n plus 3. So we got 4 raised to the 2n plus 3 power. Then we divide that by the original series a sub n. So we divide it by 10 to the n divided by n plus 1 times 4 to the 2n plus 1 power. Now this is sort of an intermediate step that people skip a lot of times because you're always going to get with this test a fraction divided by a fraction. And of course when we have that situation, we can just take the numerator here, so 10 to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 2 times 4 to the 2n plus 3. And instead of dividing by this fraction in the denominator, we can multiply by its reciprocal. That's the same thing. So we just flip it upside down and we get n plus 1 times 4 to the 2n plus 1, all divided by 10 to the n, and we're taking the absolute value of this whole thing. Now, as you can see, knowing that, we could have just gone straight to this step and skipped writing out this whole thing here. So either way, however you want to do it, it is, is fine. So in this case, now that we have the fractions written this way, we're just looking to match up values from the numerator and denominator. And what that means is basically we're looking for like bases or terms that are similar to one another. So for example, we have 10 to the n plus 1 here and we have 10 to the n. We've got the same base of 10, just a different exponent. So remember that when we have fractions like this, we're going to kind of pair these up together. When we have, for example, let's just take an easy one, right? 10 to the third over 10 
squared. We're going to simplify this by subtracting the exponent in the denominator from the exponent in the numerator. So 3 minus 2 is 1. This becomes 10 to the first power is the simplified version of 10 to the third over 10 squared. Same thing here. We have 10 to the n plus 1 over 10 to the n. So the way that we simplify that, 10 to the n plus 1 over 10 to the n, we subtract n from n plus 1. So we get n plus 1 minus n. And in that case, n plus 1 minus n, we get the n's to cancel, and we're just left with 1. So this is 10 to the first power. So you can see how that simplifies. So what we're going to be left with for that particular term is just 10 to the first power in the numerator. So 10 to the first power there. Now let's go ahead and match up 4 to the 2n plus 1 in the numerator and 4 to the 2n plus 3 in the denominator. If we take 2n plus 1 from the numerator and we subtract what's in the denominator, 2n plus 3, what we'll get is 2n plus 1 minus 2n minus 3. Our 2n's cancel, and we're left with 1 minus 3, which is a negative 2. So what that tells us, because this value is negative, is that we're just left with 4 raised to the negative 2, or in other words, 1 over 4 to the positive 2. We move that to the denominator, we get a positive value. We're just going to be left with 4 squared in the denominator. So we put this in the denominator, 4 squared like that. That's all that's left of this term. And then, of course, we have that multiplied by n plus 1 over n plus 2, which we can't simplify. There's no exponents there to simplify. Those are just terms that are remaining. Now, to evaluate this limit, we can go ahead and pull out the 10 over 4 squared. Remember that 4 squared is 16, so we essentially have 10 over 16 here, or in other words, 5 over 8 when we reduce it. So what we're left with is the limit is equal to 5 eighths times the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of n plus 1 over n plus 2. Now when we have just a rational function like this, polynomials in the numerator and denominator, the easiest way to evaluate this infinite limit is to divide through both the numerator and the denominator by the highest degree n term. And in this case, that's n to the first power. So we want to multiply by 1 over n to the first divided by 1 over n to the first, like this. And what we're left with then is L equals 5 eighths times the limit as n goes to infinity of n times 1 over n just gives us 1. So we have 1 plus 1 times 1 over n gives us 1 over n. And then in the denominator, n times 1 over n gives us 1. 2 times 1 over n gives us 2 over n. And the reason that we do this is because now we have these values of n in the denominator when we have a constant, like 1 or 2 here, divided by n, and n is going to infinity, this denominator becomes extremely large, and these two terms here are eventually going to tend toward 0 as n becomes larger and larger and larger. So these two are both going to go away and become 0, and as you can see, all that we're left with is just 1 over 1 or 1. The limit as n goes to infinity of 1 is just 1 itself, so our limit is equal to 5 eighths times 1, or just 5 eighths. Now the ratio test tells us, here's where the conclusion of the ratio test comes in. The ratio test tells us that whatever result we have here, if it is less than 1, then the series is absolutely convergent. If the value is equal to 1, the test is inconclusive. If the value is greater than 1, then we know that the series diverges. But in this case, the value is less than 1. 5 eighths is less than 1. So by the ratio test, this series here is absolutely convergent. It converges absolutely. So we looked at an example of how to use the ratio test to determine whether or not a series converges absolutely. Now let's take a look at an example of how to use the root test to determine whether or not the series converges absolutely. We're going to look at this infinite sum here from n equals 1 to infinity of the quantity n squared plus 1 divided by 2n squared plus 1, all raised to the n power. Now this is a perfect candidate for the root test because the root test tells us that the limit is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root 
of the absolute value of the series a sub n. So in other words, remember that our series a sub n is represented by this function here. So we're going to put that inside absolute value bars and we're going to take the nth root of it. Keep in mind that when we take the nth root, this nth root here, it's just going to cancel out this nth root right here. And that's what makes this particular series a perfect candidate for the root test. Whenever you can raise everything in the entire series, whenever you can put the entire series in parentheses like this and raise it to the n power or the 2n power, something like that, then the root test is a great test to use because you can get this exponent here to cancel, thereby significantly reducing the complexity of the series. So given that, we're going to say that the limit L is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of our series. So we have n squared plus 1 divided by 2n squared plus 1. And keep in mind that the series here, we had it raised to the n power like this, raised to the n power. Well, this nth root of the series is basically raising this whole thing to the 1 over n. That's why they cancel, because n times 1 over n is just 1. So this goes away, and we're just left with the absolute value of n squared plus 1 over 2n squared plus 1. Given that, we're going to do the same kind of thing that we did with our ratio test where we multiply both numerator and denominator by the highest degree n variable. In this case, that's n squared, right? n to the power of 2 is the highest exponent on any n variable in this sequence here, this series. So we're going to multiply by 1 over n squared divided by 1 over n squared. And what that's going to give us, limit equals l equals limit as n goes to infinity, what that's going to give us, n squared times 1 over n squared, we get the n squareds to cancel and we're left with 1 plus 1 times 1 over n squared is 1 over n squared. And then in the denominator, same thing, we get the n squareds here to cancel and we're left with 2 plus 1 times 1 over n squared is just 1 over n squared. And now we have that same situation where as n becomes very, very, very large, goes towards infinity, these two small fractions here will become 0. 1, if you, on your calculator, take 1 and you divide it by a very large number like 1 million or 10 million, your calculator will actually give you an answer of 0 because this number is going to become so incredibly small that it becomes insignificant and we can just call it 0. They both cancel. As you can see, obviously, we're just left with L equals the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of 1 half. Well, the absolute value is of 1 half is just 1 half. The limit as n goes to infinity of 1 half is still just 1 half. There's no n value we have to plug in for anymore. So what that tells us is that our limit, L, is equal to 1 half. And similarly with the root test as with the ratio test, when with the root test L is less than 1, we know that the series converges absolutely. So we can call this series absolutely convergent. We'll label this up here also absolutely convergent. And keep in mind that it's going to be the same thing. If we were to get L equals 1, the test would be inconclusive. If we get L greater than 1, then we know by the root test that the series diverges. But because the value is the value of the limit L is less than 1, we know that by the root test, the series is absolutely convergent.